What's up, Lowrider family? Welcome back to another episode of Lolos and More. And now today, we're doing some more work on the hopper build. Um, I just got finished working up, up in here. I was replacing my brake booster because I would have to um, pretty much almost put the pedal to the floor just to get the, the, the truck to stop. So, yeah. oh man, I'm itching for the switch. Oh, well, let me give you guys a little update of where I'm at right now. We got the truck painted. I mean, the cab. We got the bed painted as well. It's over there. Um, uh, I want to have the truck set outside in the sun before I um, cut and buff it. But I think I might do, I might wet sand it and put another coat of clear on both the cab and the bed I still have to paint the uh, the fenders the wheel wells and the core support which I'll probably do tomorrow um, like I said in the last video I finished up all the maintenance that the engine required it's no longer leaking anything put on all the powder coated parts on it that I wanted to get done um, you know looks pretty nice you can't tell you can't see much because there's a lot going on right there right now because everything all the wires and the harness is just piled up on it um, I got everything underneath the cab um, on the frame bolted down into its last place that it's going to be at um, before I put the cab on uh, everything else um, is easily accessible underneath the cab anyways you know with it mounted but uh I want to do it now since I have all the room um, to do it now. Get it out of the way. Um, I did mention that I was going to build a fuel tank. Um, but the thing is, I'm running out of time. So if I'm able to buy something already made, but I still have to fabricate something to make it work, then I will. Um, but I think this is the last thing, the only thing that I really had to buy. Um, because I, I did say that I was going to build one because I bought all the parts, everything. I bought the fuel axis, I bought the, the sending unit, I bought all the the bungs to weld it to a steel tank. I bought the, the red coat stuff that you coat steel tanks with on the inside so the tank doesn't rust. So your vehicle isn't running on rusty fuel. But I decided, screw it, aluminum tank, and I was able to buy these adapters, um, so that way I can still go off of my original plan on the fuel system. I got my fuel pump mounted. Now all I got to do is do the plumbing part of it. Um, I'm not going to do it now, but I think down the road, um, I'm going to go ahead and have somebody weld um, uh, like a tube right here so I can put fuel in it easier say what you want but for now for me to fuel up the vehicle I'm gonna have to just drop the tank fuel it back up and get going again so I'll be fueling up myself at home you know um, uh, for the time being until I can create something. I can. I, I guess I should just go ahead, weld on that tube now. But the thing is, I don't know how long it should be. If, I, if it should just come straight up or come in at an angle right here, um, or 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 what you know, because the bed is right here, and I was thinking maybe doing something with the bed to where I can um, feel it through the uh, the tail light or something, but. Uh, I don't want to customize it. Like I said, this is not a show truck at all. Um, it, not even close. Not even close. So, like I said, I'm building this to tear up the blacktop on the streets. Alright. I'm building it for my liking. Some people might get butt hurt for what I'm doing. Or maybe they think I'm doing too much to bang something up but this is mine not theirs right right like the rest of us we want to build it the way we want so 
Um, so that's where I'm at with this. I need to plumb it and do electrical. Um, the rear suspension is in completely. I think I'm, I think I showed you guys this. The brakes, the brake lines are done. Um, they're all the way fastened up, buttoned up. Um, uh, after this truck gets rolling, I'm going to take it to the exhaust shop, get an exhaust to pretty much just come out and overhang right in there, exit right there. Haven't really decided yet, but that's what I'm going to be doing. And, um, I think I did mention before that I was going to get the drive line modified, which I did, but it's not going to work. Which sucks because that's like almost 300 bucks just down the drain. Um, I'm gonna have to spend maybe, maybe I don't know, maybe another six or seven hundred for what I need to do. So, um, so I had a slip, but the drive line was too much of at an angle, and the truck won't move in neutral when it's all the way raised up or you know, quite a ways raised up. So, I'm going to get rid of the carrier bearing. It's going to be one solid um, dry shaft. Um, on G-Bodies, I know that they, uh, I, b I believe at the end of their transmission, there is a enough shaft um, on the transmission where you can pretty much drill a hole um, through the slip on the uh, dry shaft through the shaft on the transmission and put a bolt on it so it doesn't fall in and out um and that way the spring that's on a slip yoke um kind of helps keep that uh, tra uh that drive line pushed up against the transmission so that it can um, expand and retract when when you know you're raising up and down on a rear um, so unfortunately, every part that I have to buy to make my own custom driver line, I have to buy it online, nowhere nearby, even the, even the, uh, trans, uh, driveline shops don't even have parts. I found them online. I got to order them and get them coming. But for now, for me to move the truck in and out after I button up everything that the driveline will do for, for now, just to drive in and out of the garage um let's see but yeah that's where i'm at right now so those are the drive line is next right now in the middle of the fuel uh plumbing part and then um and then start building the front suspension to use the g body uh components um but yeah, I mean, you guys are probably asking, why do I have that jack in there? Well, it turns out when I was flipping the frame around, um, when I was reinforcing it, it turns out that uh, I, the one time that I it dropped on me on on the uh, mounts right there, it turned out it, it bent it in quite a bit. So it's in there so I can align the bed. Um, yeah, so it bolts up the way it's supposed to. And then I went ahead, mount, welded my rack posts, um, and then, um, yeah, that's where I'm at. So, um, maybe in this video, I'll also be building my new rack. It'll look very similar to that one. That one's going to go in the trash, and I'm going to build another one. Um, if I don't throw it in the trash, and if, I, if there's somebody that wants it. They can have it. Um, it's not. It's not terrible. It's just not what I need right now. I need something. Um, let's see. A little something just slightly shorter, and to um, lessen that gap right there. So that's pretty much. What, yeah, I could have just redid that one, but let's face it. It's a hopper. You. I, you know, that needs to be just a little bit heavier. Uh, that whole rack, I can barely move it. It's nothing thick, but um, I, I can move it around. But it needs to be just a little bit heavier uh, because with that being a little bit heavier and with my red top batteries over there, 
Odyssey batteries. Those are enough weight, is what I'm assuming, to help get this truck on the bumper. If not, then we're going to have to figure something out because the hoppers do add weight in the rear. Um, I've asked some guys that have trucks as hoppers, and they've all said that they've added anywhere between two to 350 pounds in the rear um, to get it going. But I have this right here. I have an extended cab. So my cab is a lot heavier than the Chevys and Rangers and Nissans out there. So I need to take an account for that to add it in the rear so it'll lift it up. Um, and then I have a V6. Normally these other trucks have like four cylinders. Some of them do have six cylinders, but a lot of them run on the four cylinders. Um, so I got a little bit more weight in the front than I do than the truck hoppers. So, all right, enough of me talking. I'm going to get to work. Um, I'm going to knock out the fuel part. And then when it's time to start fabricating the wreck, I guess that's what, uh, what I'll bring you back in. All right, everybody. So I did, I did some extra painting. Um, continue putting the, you know, pieces together, cleaning up the wiring, doing some soldering, um, re you know, just fixing wiring that, you know, starting to go corroded, replacing it and stuff like that. Um, so, uh, just real quick, let's see. So I did say that I was going to go ahead and use my stock, um, spindles to, to put on the hopper that I was going to just weld them together and reinforce it because they are a two piece. But after talking to another fellow hopper, uh, not another, but to a guy that's in the game, a good friend of mine, um, he said, because I, I told him I was thinking about going with the Caprice, but they're almost the same size. Uh, I was just going to weld the crap out of these and uh, reinforce it and put it on. But, you know, going back and forth, I figured might as well just have a one piece and reinforce it. So I don't risk anything because the last thing I want is these bolts to break and then the welds to snap with it because it's all, it's all cast. So cast is easy to break. Um, and my, my spindle is eight inches long. And then I, I did tell you guys that I was going to go with uh, G body spindles. But I think I said that they're just slightly too small. These are these are seven and a half. So I'm not gonna use those. Um so I've decided I went to the junkyard and it was one Cadillac at the junkyard nearby. So I'm gonna be using Cadillac spindles and these are uh, eight and three quarter. So they're only three quarter longer than mine. So I'm gonna clean these up, reinforce them, powder coat them and slap them on the truck. I'm gonna buy new calipers um, and that's pretty much it, the rotors. It looks like somebody replaced the rotors in the pads not that long ago. So I'm just going to clean those up, paint the rest. Um, the rusty areas after I clean it up as good as I can. And uh, I run them like that. Yeah, so for those wondering, the measurements on the spindles, Cadillac slash Caprice are 8 and 3 quarter. Um, G bodies are 7 inch. So... If you guys are wondering, um, so that's what I'm. What's, that's what I'm gonna be doing. And the next thing I'll be doing in this video also is I'm going to be making my dry shaft. So I got my slip yoke here. I'm waiting for the spring to come in. I got my adapter uh, U-joint uh, U conversion joint here. Um, it has two different size caps. Um, so that I can put put it on my truck 
and I got a six foot piece of drive line pipe down there so um, like I've said before in many many videos that um, they don't make anything for my truck so that's why I had to get that conversion u-joint um, to slap it in my truck um, yeah so you're gonna be seeing that in this video and seeing the reinforcement of, of the spindles in this video and building my rack all in this video and that is the majority of what needs to be done on the truck um, so that's what I'm gonna do and like I did say before I'm gonna modify my a arms my upper a arms so that I can put on um, G body Cadillac style board joints on the top so if they break I can just slap them on and keep going because they're easy to put on and off all right so I'm gonna go ahead and take these apart cleaning them up um, and then we'll see where we go from there as I'm button up the the truck the wirings and stuff like that I'm not gonna show it I know this is not what you guys are here to see it's a Dodge Dakota only handful of people are you know driving these as low riders like I said before I think there's not maybe five total you know with this body style and the slightly newer body style um, so enough of me talking how about we get to work well uh, I got a, did a little bit more progress on the truck on the hopper we should say um, so I've been putting the bed and the new rack on and off, on and off for fitment. Um, uh, let's see. I thought I was going to have to chop up the underneath of the bed a little bit, but it turns out I don't have to because the new fuel lines and the wire harness, um, uh, due to now the frame being thicker and it's no longer hollow, um, it, the, nothing's getting pinched. So that's, that's good. Um, I, I, I know I did say I was going to show you guys cutting, welding, and everything like that, but I figured it's just a rack. I figured I'll just go ahead and build a rack. Um, that way I don't have to deal with uh, recording or anything like that, but I will be uh, showing you guys me modifying some arms so that it'll fit my truck. Because, um, uh, um, like I said, I'm going to be using Cadillac spindles, which is also Caprice. Um, I bought my unbreakable ball joints as well. Um, one thing you guys should know is don't buy them on any hydraulic website. Um, go straight to Napa. Go straight to Napa Auto Parts and save that part number right there. Um, this will get you what you want because this is what they sell. This is exactly what they sell online on the hydraulic stores. All they do is uh, take it out of the packaging and put it in their own box. The exact same thing. So G bodies, Cadillacs, Caprice, um, save that model number. So um, those are, I think, in Oregon, they're $43.99 each. Online, they're like 120 for the pair. So do the math. You'll save yourself a ton of money. Plus, they, they'll charge you shipping. So keep that in mind. So if, if there's a Napa Auto Parts near you, or you can just go online and order it straight from Napa Auto Parts, you will still pay less than what you did do with the hydraulic store online. So um, my rack is pretty much done. Uh, it's like almost 1 o'clock in the morning here. I ran out of wire. I'm just about out of gas. So... It kind of it kind of works out. So now all I all I can do now is focus on um, cutting all my plates out for the upper and lower A arms. I'm gonna uh, cut out the pocket, put a deeper pocket for the lower control arms, reinforce it, and then like I said, I need to modify a, a G body arm to fit my truck. So. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. But in my rack, I haven't done the out 
the outer mount so all i did was the center mount it's probably overkill but what i did was because i wanted some something to secure it in the middle of the batteries so i decided to go with this uh half inch thick um steel i cut out an opening because it is a hopper so all everything fine tuning a, a hopper it's all about adding weight taking away weight um combining uh, not combining but um um working your gears by um what, what would you say uh swapping out the gears see what works better you know um and making your motor stronger so it can last longer but all but the other part of it is adding and taking away weight so if i have to add weight that's why i created this little passageway if i have to i'll lay weight in here um but yeah that's where i'm at but the whole rack the whole rack all of the material is all a uh, quarter inch thick besides the hold downs um but yeah everything else is quarter inch thick the one section after I was done with it, I could not even lift it. I can only lift it on one side, so I have to use the engine, crane or hoist, whatever you want to call it, cherry picker. So that's where we're at right now. And the only thing that I have to do is modify my arms is uh, pretty much what I have to do is just cut around the ears of my original arms so I can keep um, the position that they're in, um, just cut those out and tag them into place onto some G body arms so I can still use my dog bone on my truck. Since I did not modify the front like I wanted to in the first place, because the, the idea that I had was I was going to put plate all across there so it would be flat, and then I was going to put um, some um, stand up mounts. And then um, I can just uh, mount the arms, you know, um, like the way Cadillacs and G-Bodies are. But mine, you have to mount it down um, because this system, this little mount, kind of sucks. But it's doable. I reinforced the crap out of it around it, so it's, it will hold up. Um, I'm not worried about it anymore, but I, I, I wish I would have done it the other way, but... There's no room in that little area to do what I wanted to do. So that's why I'm sticking this way. So I'm still pl plugging away, cleaning up the wiring little by little. Um, but that's 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 where I'm at. Rack is done. So now we're going to focus on the A-arms. Um, sorry, I've been talking too much. I've just been working a little bit here, here and there. I mean, I also finished up my straps to hold the fuel tank into place. I don't know if you can kind of see the fuel tank right there so it's hanging in there so with some straps that I made I haven't decided if I want to powder coat the straps or just paint match to the the rest right so that's where I'm at I still need to see what I want to do with the interior I'm kind of running out of time to do anything with the interior so uh, we will see I know for sure I'm changing out the carpet but that's it all right, well, let me set up for those. Let me take those apart, and uh, we'll get back to it. Today has been one long-ass day. So here we are again uh, working uh, on another thing for the hopper. So today, uh, at the moment, I am building the dry shaft. So on mine right now, like I was saying earlier... The carrier bearing is an issue, so we have to get rid of that. Um, so we're going to go with one solid uh, dry shaft. So I just finished um, taking apart the the yoke that goes into my transmission off of the, uh, the old dry shaft. So all I got to do now is uh, clean up those edges and get it ready for, uh, for to be welded on. Okay. So, put that there, and 
where to go. So, and then here we got the slip yoke part right there. Um, I got the spring. It's on the sitting on the cart right now. Um, so this will go on the back end. I still haven't cut my dry shaft yet to the length that I need it. But this is how it's going to pretty much be set up. Uh, once it's welded up, of course. Um, so it's not hard to do one yourself, but to perfectly aligned, align the, the pipe with the ends is probably the most important thing of building your own dry shaft. And plus, since you're making your own, well, since I'm making my own, um, I'm not going to balance it because I'm not going to really cruise my truck this year. Um, I'll probably just cruise it, uh, you know, where I live at for, for the moment until I can get a nice dry shaft made there where I can feel comfortable cruising it anywhere. Um, but this is what I'm going to do for now because I really want to get into the shows with the truck this summer before summer ends. So, um, so two things, two measurements that you need, I know I've mentioned them before, but two measurements that you need to make your dry shaft is, um, is what I did. I went off of the, uh, the center right here on the dry shaft, on the transmission part. I went from center here to the center end. Um, that's on, that's on the axle and right here. So from center to the center hole over there, those are, the, those are where I got my measurements at. So you want to make sure that your ride has all the weight that you're going to put into it. By weight, I mean your hydraulics, the batteries, your rack, everything to lower your vehicle so you know where, um, the right height lowered is going to be at. So after you do that, raise, raise, raise it up to where you're going to have your lock up at, and then go ahead and grab a measurement again from center to center, uh, like where I just showed you, and then that gives you your raised height measurement. And then normally you'll take those two measurements, take them to a dry shaft shop, and they'll build what you need with those two measurements and that's pretty much all you need so that's what I'm gonna do right now by myself so um, so this piece since I couldn't find one for my truck um, this is a I think like a six six or five inch slip so it's not much as what normally they sell online on black magic hydraulics or CZE or Hoppos or anything like that, so I had to go with something different, and then I had to I have to really be careful of what I'm doing, because um, if I overextend, then this is gonna pop out. But I'm only gonna hop it. I'm not gonna really cruise it this summer. I'm not gonna raise lock it up when I'm driving, so this will be perfect for what I'm doing for now. Until I can do more research and see if I can get something longer. But that's what I'm going to do. Um, so after I clean up that one. So I can get it ready to to weld. The thing is. Um, the dry shaft pipe. And this part right here. They have to be pressed together. <clears throat> you can't just. Align them up. As good as you can. And start welding. You can't do that. These pieces have to be pressed in together. I don't have a press here. What I'm going to do is try and try and squeeze it together using straps that's all I have available to myself right now so that's what I'm gonna do um, so uh, so when I come back I'm gonna have my pipe cut and ready to weld it um, and another important thing to do to keep in mind is when you make your cut your cut has to be 
flush. It has to be straight. When you make a cut, luckily you can um, um, go back to the dry shaft shop, cut it to the length you need, and then do it yourself. But right now, I don't have the time to do that. So what I'm going to use to get the cut as perfect as possible is uh, you can go to plumbing stores and they sell these wrapper rounds for pipe. Um, so pretty much this is what plumbers and fitters use um, so they can get a good clean straight cut on their pipe. So it's just a wrap around. Right, that's the brand of this one. So that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to go ahead and get my cut, clean those up, um, probably tack it in place, and then we'll be right back. All right, so I went ahead, tacked in the front piece. That is ready to be welded on. Um, I already did my cut back here. So what I have to do is just clean up the edge real quick and uh, line up the, the slip. And be careful with it I gotta just just like tap it in to get it started and then uh, I ended up using a two inch ratchet it helps snug it into place really well what I did in the front um, but one thing you want to keep in mind is even though I did use that that uh, pipe wrap around thing that I just showed you um, you still want to check if the hole if the cut is flush and the way I do that is well, I make sure that the pipe is uh, level anyways see it's all level and then uh, you go off of that to make sure that it's leveled so um, I did co cut it with a porta band right there and I noticed that I started uh, uh, I kind of, I kind of saw that I was cutting into the wrap around a little bit. I just maybe skimmed it, and then uh, I took a little level to it, and it was a little, just slightly off. So all I did was take my grinding wheel, and I know from from this point, from the halfway point on the pipe, I started to kind of bow this way. So I figured I just went ahead, just grinded it very lightly, back and forth, back and forth. And then a couple circles, then back and forth, back and forth, just on half of the circle, and then tested it, and just just keep uh, keep keep checking, make sure that that hole is as flat, flush, as straight as possible. Last thing you want is to be is for there to be extra vibration in the drive line than what you want. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, clean that up, press in. The, the slip yoke and we're gonna get that done here in a moment all right well after I tacked it up uh, I went ahead and just welded it like always sorry guys um but uh, I mean that's pretty much it um when it came time to putting on the pieces I just make sure that they were as straight as possible um by that I mean, um, press it on all the way, and then um, what I did was just make made a couple tacks on it on each side, and then roll it. And if everything seems like uh, like it's rolling pretty straight, like if it's not just when it's rolling, it's not just flopping. Um, as long as you see hardly any or it's zero flopping on both sides, um, then you know you did. That it's pretty much lined up as as perfect as it's, as it's gonna be. Uh, I, like I said, I do recommend just have a dry shaft shop do it for you because they will do it straight. They will balance it, paint it for you, and it's ready to install into your car. Um, so that's what they're that's what they'll do for you. Um, so I I highly recommend that. So um. Uh, just so you don't have any issues down the road and because they know how to weld it and they know how to cut it and they know how to align it so I recommend use the shop but if you're in my shoes and you're in a bind uh, because of time and you want something temporary and you got extra cash then you guys can probably do this 
Um, so that's what I did. Um, so like I said earlier, I cut this front piece off of an old dry shaft. Um, and then uh, this, the slip yoke, I bought it from a, a nearby local tr um, dry shaft shop. They were able to get me the, the female and male slip. Um, and also, uh, because there's, they sell nothing for my truck, no matter what, I had to get a different size U-joint. Uh, um, uh, what would you say? Different size, a universal U-joint. So the universal U-joint means it has two, two caps of the same size. And then the other two caps are a different size to fit on to what you're, whatever you need to put it on. So, like for example, just just for shits and giggles, we'll say these holes are for one inch, but the one on my truck might be an inch and a quarter. So, that's what the universal adapter uh, U joint is for. So, this is the only way that uh, will make it work on my low rider. So, um, this tube is pretty thin. Um. So hopefully it does what I need to do. There are videos on YouTube, um, but they're mainly about off-road vehicles, about building dry shafts. Um, it's pretty much the same concept, pretty much exact same thing. Um, very close. Um, it's not that far off from each other um, because they have to build their dry shafts with a plenty of travel, like kind of what we do. But they go up and down in rocks and, and stuff like that, like crazy. Um, but for us, it's just we raise it, we leave it there, we lower it, we leave it there. So that's that's what it is. Um, but what I probably wanted to do, what I noticed was uh, off-road guys, they use thick um, tubing. They don't use dry shaft tubing. They use thick um, pipe over like that over there that's like a quarter inch thick pipe or 3 16 pipe um they use they use that kind of pipe on their rides um which may be something i should have thought of using but i didn't have any that would that these would fit in perfectly so um we'll have to maybe do that another time um like i said this is just temporary I will eventually get one professionally made, um, but this is this is just because I'm doing one for myself. Might as well show you guys how I was doing it. Um, so after I was done, I went ahead. I took my measurements again from the center cap here to the center cap here, and um, it, it's giving me plenty of what I want. So on mine. Uh, I, I, I adjusted my trailing arm so now when it's raised down that's where it's at the furthest and when it's raised up and it's when it's the um, smallest or shortest or whatever you want to call it um, so my dry shaft uh, down is uh, 68 and 3 quarters so I went ahead I put this down to 68 inches from cap to cap just because um, because it is a hopper just in case I need to add more weight. If I add more weight, it's going to drop it down lower. So I took an extra count just to, just for that. And then my raised height. Um, no, no. was it? No. My lowered was 69 and a quarter. My bad. Um, so, and then my raised height was uh, uh, 68 and three quarter. So... And just in case I want to go a little higher, I left myself some extra room. So, sorry to confuse you guys there. Um, I was just... I don't know. You, you guys know. You guys, It happens to me a lot. Um, I kind of get ahead of myself. Um, but that that's it right there. So, can't wait to put it on. But like I said, it's not much of a travel slip like you guys would get on your low riders so hopefully this works for me all right well let's uh let's get this back home and put it on the truck 
Well, everybody, we, uh, we're here today. It's completely put together. Um, I have little side projects that I need to take care of, um, as in upgrades that I want to do to the engine bay. But other than that, the truck is pretty much completely put together. Um, I, uh, I went ahead and installed the dry shaft. I kept that strap connected to it so it can hold both pieces together because that spring is, uh, is, is the only thing keeping the yoke and the shaft uh, separated so that the shaft doesn't come out of the uh, transmission. So, so that's what mine's doing because normally on G bodies, they recommend when you buy slip yoke, they recommend you put you drill a hole on on your output shaft from the transmission into the yoke that goes into the transmission from the dry shaft. They recommend you drill a hole. I don't I don't remember what size hole, and then put a bolt through it, and then so that that end can stay connected to the transmission at all times, and then this can just freely move back and forth. Um, my rear end doesn't move that much. Um, but, uh, after putting it on and that, and that spring, there's, I mean, it's pretty strong. Um, it pushes those two pieces out quite a bit. So it shoves the dry shaft into the transmission a little bit more than what it should. It's not going to hurt it or anything, but if I knew that it was going to do that, I would have made that dry shaft maybe another two inches longer. So, but I'm going to go ahead and just have a transmission shop make it two inches longer and then they'll build it right. Um, I'll just let them know how to do it because sometimes you take it to a dry shaft shop, shop and they don't know what you're trying to do. So just take a picture, take your measurements or just let them know what you want them to do. So in my case, I'm just gonna tell them, hey, I just need the tube to be two inches longer and then that's all I need. So they're gonna just weld it up properly, balance it and give it back to me. Um, so I slapped it on without painting it because I just want to see how it was going to fit on. So, um, but yeah, my slip is a lot shorter than what you guys would normally buy a mask. Um, you know, from Black Magic, Hoppos, or CCE or whatever. I think, I think there's like an eight slip, eight inch slip or something like that. This is like maybe five or six of a slip. Um, but like I said, my tra my rear end doesn't travel all that much. So it pretty much stays just like that, even when it's all the way down. Um, but yeah, um, I mean, but yeah, like I was, but yeah, I don't even know what I was trying to say, but, but that's pretty much it for the dry shaft part. Um, and then, uh, like I said in the previous videos or previous clips, my brake system is all from um, Amazon. The fittings, the hard line, the hoses, uh, yeah, everything. Even the little metal clip that I welded to the rear end. I welded it. You can buy that piece, welded it to it. Um, and then there's a clip you know, that holds that fitting. Stuff like that. Made my own hard lines. I'm kind of proud of the hard line that I did on the rear end. I mean, it's nothing fancy. But it's the first time that I do... I mean, this technically is my second time doing hard lines, brake lines, and it came out pretty good. Um, so, yeah, even, they, they even sell that spring that goes around the tubing on Amazon as well. And for the front, Amazon as well, right here. A new fitting from Amazon, uh, extended hose from Amazon, fitting as well got my helper springs on right now they're loose that that's not how i'm gonna have them they are they are gonna be a little bit more tight but i still need to break in the front springs um but yeah i mean that's all it is now So I just got a little bit of uh, fine tuning to do. I was kind of playing with it this morning. Um, and I got up maybe maybe 30 inches. Um, but I didn't have it all the way locked up or anything like that. And uh, like I said before, my rack 
the way I built it, there's a pocket underneath the batteries that I can put weight in it if I have to. If for any reason, if this heavy rack isn't heavy enough, um, I can add weight if I need to. So I still gotta clean up the, the wires a little bit. Um, and stuff like that. Switch wires, clean it up a little bit. Um, the fuel tank that I installed, I need to replace the bolts because that's just all thread right now. Holding in about maybe five gallons at the moment. Um, but uh, the up one upgrade that I will be doing to the truck is uh, welding, finding somebody that can weld aluminum professionally and and have them uh, install some kind of tube so I can put a rubber tube to it so I can easily fill it up with gas because right now I gotta drop the tank and fill it up and put it back in but I made it easy to where it can just be dropped and then put back up so that's the easy part yeah no things that I have to risk not risk but uh, sacrifice for the for the moment so Yep, and like I said, I got the, the lower trailing arms from an off-road company, and then I extended them, welded them on. So I'm using off-road 4x4 stuff on my truck, um, and, be, and I'm using bigger bushings than what you would normally see on an Impala or G-Body. So my bushings are different from your guys's, what you guys would use. So my, my stuff is all truck grade stuff so yep I think that's all I'm gonna do for now um, I still gotta do some upgrades to the interior but that uh, I still need to finish wet sanding and polishing right now she's dirty I gotta put her to work I got a couple weeks to fine tune it and that's all I gotta do I'm not gonna worry too much about the paint because I already screwed that up. I mean, I'm learning as I go. Like I said to you guys before, I, I try to learn everything on my own and do it on my own. It might look like crap at first, but after redoing it a couple times, then, then uh, you'll know how to do it and you can charge people later on or continue doing what you're doing solo. So uh, this I'm gonna cut it here. And the next video will be me fine-tuning the truck, seeing if I have to add weight to it or not, or do some more fining to the uh, pump, which would be either switching out the gear, putting more nitrogen in it, or taking out some nitrogen, just finding a sweet spot. But yet again, I still need to break in those springs. All right, everybody. I'll see you on the next one. Till then, peace.